Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and open up this morning worship with prayer and consecration. So just come on in. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to do today. Yes. Hallelujah. So just begin to open up your mouth. Oh, yes. And begin to pray in your own way this morning. Hallelujah. Just begin to tell God who he is to you. Hallelujah, God. You're my provider, oh God. You're my way maker, oh God. Hallelujah, God. You're the light in my dark places, oh God. Hallelujah, God. You've been there for me, God. When nobody else was there for me, oh God. Hallelujah. You've been my father, God, to the fatherless, God. You've been a mother to the motherless, oh God. God, and we thank you on today, oh God. God, before we ask you for anything, oh God, we open up our mouths and thank you for everything, oh God. God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs, oh God. God, we thank you for waking us up and calling our names on this morning, oh God. God, we thank you, God, for just another day, God, that we've never seen before, God. God, we thank you on today, God. We thank you for everything, oh God. God, we thank you for being our way maker, God, our provider, God, holler, God, our sustainer, sustainer, God, in the name of Jesus, God, our mind regulators, God, keeping our minds, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Now, God, we ask, God, that you would just come into this place, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, saturate this atmosphere with your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, the anointing that destroys the yokes, God, and breaks the chains, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we give you permission, God, to have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask, God, that you would move right now in the name of Jesus, God, from heart to heart, God, from breast to breast, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Let your anointing, God, rest on these chairs, God, in the name of Jesus, God, so that when the people come and sit in it, God, they feel you in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Hallelujah, God, we ask right now, God. We call on the Holy Ghost fire right now, God. So burn up anything that's on the inside, God, that is not like you. Right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we tell you, God, to have your way. God, we tell you, God, to have your way, God. This is your service, God. Do whatever you see fit to do, God, in the name of Jesus, God. If you want to heal, God, you can heal us, God. If you want to break the chain, God, you do that, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we thank you today. God, just a few weeks in service, God. Just to come and say thank you, God. Just to come and uplift your name, oh God. God, we praise you, God. We thank you for being our Lord, God. We thank you for ruling over our lives, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Move, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we praise you on today, God. God, we call you King of Kings, God. We call you Lord of Lords, oh God. Hallelujah. We love you today, oh God. God, touch the man servant, God, that is bringing your word on today, God. Touch him from the top of his head, God, to the very toes of his feet, oh God. Give him anointing of fresh, God. Use him, God. Use him, God, to give us a word that we need to make it just a little bit farther, oh God. God, we say thank you. God, we say thank you. We say thank you, God. We say thank you, oh God. We say thank you, God.
Hallelujah. If you can get your Bibles and turn to Psalms 27. Psalms 27, 1 through 6, and then we will skip down and read 13 and 14. When you have it, I will ask if you can to stand to your feet. Psalms 27, 1 through 6, and then 13 through 14. Let us declare the word of the Lord together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. Yes. In this will I be confident. Yes. Understand this. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, thing One thing have I desired of the Lord. Yes. That will I seek after. Uh -huh. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. When? Oh, yeah. All the days of my life. Yeah. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Yeah. And to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. will I offer in his tabernacle Sacrifice. sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. I will sing praises yeah. unto the Lord. Yeah. Thirteen says, I had fainted yeah. unless. I believe I'll read that again. Yeah. I had fainted yeah. unless.
This is still a part of worship, and we ask God that you are pleased with our praise and pleased with our worship. Yes. We understand it's not about how much, Lord God, but the condition of our hearts, God. So God, we say thank you for what we do have. But we understand if we give back into the kingdom of God, that you will stretch it out on our behalf. Good measure. Hallelujah. Press down. Shaking together and running over. Hallelujah. There are envelopes in the seats before you. If you do not um, have one, you can raise your hand. But I'm asking that the envelopes that are in the basket, that you will begin to pass them out to everyone, please. As you all know, this is a new ministry that we have, that no one shall stand empty-handed before the Lord. We are looking for a corporate blessing in the name of Jesus. So we want to position ourselves to receive of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the envelopes are being passed out. Does everyone have one? No. no. Okay, where are they? We need everyone to move expeditiously. Here they are, right here. 
Yeah, yeah, just pass those out. Yes, everyone gets an envelope. Everyone gets one. Hallelujah. We are asking that if you are viewing us on Facebook and also YouTube, you can give also. We do have Cash App, which is entitled Assembly of Faith, and you can also give by way of Givelify. Assembly of a Church, 1571 South Parsons Avenue. And hey, if you want to mail it in, we'll take those to Post Office Box 7631. 7631 Columbus, Ohio, 43207. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have they been passed out up here? Everyone should have one. Even if they have one, pass them out. Pass them out, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to open heaven. Everywhere I go, I want to open heaven. Hallelujah. But you know, you just got to position yourself. Hallelujah. Position yourself. And the way that we do that is we give that it may be giving back unto us. It doesn't make sense in the other kingdom. In the other kingdom, it says to, to can all you get and get all you can, right? right but right. in this kingdom, it says to give and then I'll give it back to you. Right. Hallelujah. Right. So there should be a transformation yeah. in your mindset in this new kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. The kingdom of light yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Can you all stand to your feet and come and with a cheerful heart? Yes. It's just your blessed. You know, to be able to give and sow a seed into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Our heavenly and eternal Father, we love you. We thank you. We glorify you, God. We glorify you in every aspect of our life, Father. We praise you with our hands and with our lips and with our feet. But we also praise you, Lord God, with our monetary blessings, Father. We give it unto you because we know can nobody do us like you can, Father. God, yes, we plant seeds into the kingdom. But it's your business how you give it back. But any way you bless us, will be satisfied, Father. So, God, we just come today to continue to worship and honor you and ask that you are pleased with our praise. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on from this side. Hallelujah. Bring your offerings. Hallelujah. Bless them, God. Bless them, God. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, saints. Hallelujah.
bless uh, ask for those who haven't had a chance to be a blessing to uh, First Lady for her birthday. We want to give you uh, a little time in the service today. Don't preach a sermon. <laughs> Nothing like that. That's going to be my job. Amen. But we want to make sure that you have time. Uh, to say If you don't have anything, please say something um, as encouragement to our First Lady. Amen. Because she's a wonderful First Lady. Yes. Amen. Yes. And she is. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Before we do that, I want to remind everybody in here, especially if you are a leader, a minister in that purpose, 11 o'clock on Saturday, we have corporate prayer. And I was thinking, I'm like, I wonder what they feel like when 11 o'clock comes and you're not on prayer call. Something should tell you that you should be on this 11 o'clock corporate prayer. Amen, leaders. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I mean, COVID came in and we were gung-ho. It was on a prayer call and we didn't miss a time. And now I think people got shot. Some got two shots. And heard that they need another shot. Amen. We have to keep on praying, church. Hello? Yes. Amen. So I'm asking, it, it, listen, I'm expecting my leaders to be on the prayer call. I'm expecting my leaders to be on the prayer call at 11. Even if you're not at home, we were out before. We just pulled over because 11 o'clock came. That's a consecrated time as a body of Christ to be on the prayer call. Amen. 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 You should feel a certain way when 11 o'clock come on Saturday and you're not on that prayer call. Amen. Amen. The only reason why you shouldn't be on the prayer call is if the Lord has called you home. <laughs> well, Amen, church. Amen. It's important. Yes. It's important that we are on corporate prayer time on Saturday. Amen. At what time? 11 o'clock. Try your best not to plan a hair appointment yes. at 11. Yes. That's the problem that Jesus had with his disciples. They couldn't even play with, pray with him for just an hour. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's true. Amen. Amen. So let's do that. I'm expecting you to. I'm expecting you to at 11 o'clock. I had to bring the bad news when it came to good news. <laughs> So hopefully it don't take away from y'all giving her kind words. Amen. 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 But we have to do this. We're talking about corporate blessings and an open heaven for us and everyone having something to give. But if we're not in agreement during prayer time, what's going on? Amen. Amen. So enough said. We'll see you next Saturday. If it be the Lord's will at 11. Amen. 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 All right. Don't get on and say, Bishop, I was on the line. I just didn't say nothing. Amen. You get on, acknowledge who you are. Amen. 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 If you don't have the number, we can get you that number. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, whoever wants to come and say some, some kind words or want to lead us in this, do so. I'm going to sit down for a moment. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well. Well, happy birthday, uh, First Lady. There is so, so, so much I can say. Um, but uh, I appreciate your uh, determination, your um, your intelligence. I appreciate everything about you. Um, it's an honor to be able to serve you. Um, and I don't take that position lightly. I thank God for giving me that position and coming into your life. Um, I heard someone say something to T.D. Jakes and said that he was a shepherd over the shattered. And when I heard that, you dropped into my spirit because you pour into so many shattered people on a daily basis all day long. And I thank God for your uh, shepherdness over all of us. I know Bishop is our shepherd, but you are also our shepherd. And um, I just want to say I love you. Um, myself, Emmanuel, uh, my husband, Robert, Elise, Daily, we love you and happy birthday. Amen. 
First Lady, I love you. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot, but just know that I love you. I appreciate you. Um, thank you for being my First Lady. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for speaking life into me. I love you and I appreciate you. Just a little something, not much, just a little something, but I love you. Happy birthday. Amen. stand before you and tell you happy birthday and I wish that God will allow you to have plenty more and I just thank you for such a beautiful woman you are you're not only beauty on the outside you're beauty on the inside yeah. and God said he'd give you ashes for your beauty and he did yeah. and I just thank you because you're such a wonderful mentor to me yeah. you sh have showed me so many ways to learn how to love God, to have accept God in my life. Even when I was down in my Lord's with losing my son, my son-in-law, you was there and First Lady to help pick me up. And I don't have nothing to stand before you, but I had sold into your fundraiser as you asked me to do. And I think it is, it is a well cause. And I just want to tell you happy birthday. And I thank you and may God bless you many more years. Amen. morning. I just want to wish you a happy birthday. I wasn't able to be with you all on yesterday, but I want you to, to know that I thank you for who you are in Christ and all that you give from him, what he gives through you. And you are a great woman, a wonderful daughter-in-law, and I appreciate you and I love you very much. I didn't get to get out. I'm going to give you something to get a chicken sandwich with. So, it's not even, you know my transportation situation. So let, just let me give you this little bit. I praise God for you. I thank God for your friendship for your determination to serve God. I love you, and I just want you to know that I'm there for you. You were there for me through everything. My daughter's passing, COVID, throughout the years, whatever. I'm here for you, and I love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, First Lady. Uh, give out to God who you are and what you have been doing and your growth to as well. You have given and given to so many people. Sometimes it does not get that back in return, but God knows who you are. God got you in the palm of his hand. Just want to let you know how much you always encourage me because when I got ready to go preach at this conference uh, last Saturday, I sent you a text to let you know what I felt about it. And you told me, you said, Elvin, uh, speak the way you do because you got so much boldness and potential in you. And when you do step up, 
God is going to step up and be there with you. And that's what he did. So I want to let you know, you always give me encouraging words. And people do not do it, but you and I, we talk a lot. But you keep me so encouraged and so inspired. So I want to let you know what I see in you. And the best is yet to come. Amen. This is just a token that my wife and I present to you. So we want you to enjoy this day. And like you always tell us, you create yourself a wonderful day. <laughs> First Lady Elder Kimberly S. Bozeman. <laughs> There's a harmony of words that have been said about you because you have um, an anointed thread that is intertwined in all of our lives, you know, uniquely and collectively. And there's not enough adjectives to describe you, you know, literally everything that someone else said, everyone else can also say because it's a common thread of who you are. I believe I shared with you a short while ago that uh, in, a, in the military, there's people who are um, ready at a minute's notice, you know. Um, there's, there's some that go to boot camp, and there's some that, you know, have to go to training, but there's some that are on a call's notice. And God, that is you in the kingdom. That is you in the kingdom. They, they, they're, they're called the first responders. They're the ones who have their bags in the corner, and when they get that call, they're already headed on assignment. And that is you, Elder Kimberly, uh, First Lady Elder Kimberly Bozeman. Um, but, but in all your vastness of how God has stretched his hand through you, you're humble and loving enough to share it. Yeah. You're humble and loving enough that when you sow those seeds, you see a wounded soul and you never leave them behind. You'll, you'll, you'll reach out and I thank God that I'm one of them. And I thank God that when we are all in glory, I can say I'm there because of your faithfulness. I'm there because you've never given up. I'm there that you were always on assignment and you've always prayed and done the things that God asked you to do on my behalf. So I thank you, First Lady Elder Kimberly Charmaine Bozeman. Church as well as my body and I. Amen. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on, but this is on behalf of our body and I. I thought I had everything. Yes, so. no. But we appreciate you and we love you. Thank you for being the person that you are as well as the sister in law that you are. Appreciate your uh, gentle heart, your words of wisdom, and you're just a graceful woman and we appreciate you and we love you. Thank you so much. about um, a good woman to be praised. So we praise you now 
and I gave you encouraging words yesterday. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you and open up every door that's necessary for your growth in your life and your ministry and even in your business. You know, so we just thank you. We love you so much. We cannot express, but hopefully what we've given you thus far is, is enough. And we vow to meet your every need. Yes. So don't hesitate to let us know. So these are all gifts from the church. Happy birthday, Mom. I love you. Uh, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. I uh, love you more than anything in this world. And um, yeah, if you ever need anything, just let me know. I'm always there for y'all at the house. And I uh, wish you the longest lifetime of happiness and uh, success. Yeah. Yes. Happy birthday. really no words to express how I feel about each and every one of you. All of you play such a vital role in my life. And there's an um, African proverb that says, I am because you are. You know, so you're very important to me. I love you all immensely over and over and thoroughly and thoroughly. Again, thank you so much. I am overwhelmed, but this is a good, it, it ain't stressed. You know, it's a good thing. So I, I love you all so, so very much. And you all know if there's anything that you need from me, I'm a text away, a phone call away. So thank you for making my life what it is. Bless you. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Amen for uh, blessing your first lady. Amen, and I know that it's an honor to do so. I thank God for her, and I do all the time. I, I thank God because we are together in what we do. Amen, we have that understanding, and we know that we are called to do ministry together. And we've been doing it for how many years now? Longer than the 20-something we've been passionate. Yeah. Amen, but I do, I thank God. She is the darling of my heart. Amen. Amen. Amen, and I love her so Amen. much, and she knows that. So I'm grateful that you were able to share in with us today and celebrate her life, and uh, I pray that you're able to stay around after service today and get some of that good cake, yes. okay? Please don't, don't, please don't rush out, but just kind of linger around for a moment and make her day complete. Uh, if you don't mind. Amen. So I'm grateful today. Amen. Thank you for all of those that took time out of your schedule 
to be a blessing to her. He had a wonderful time yesterday yes. as well, too. Yes. Man, you got some stuff, girl. Yes. This is what she always asked me, what we got? <laughs> what we got? <laughs> Amen. What, what we got? My son, what my son say? He said he loved her more than this. What well, you told me? Amen. Praise, praise God, y'all. I'm so grateful. And she is that that woman. Uh, man, I, I tell you. And I, I know some first ladies, y'all heard me say, but every first lady is not a saving first lady. Yes, Hello? Amen. Women can make or break a man's ministry. Yes. Right here, man. They can compliment it or they can destroy it. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I thank God for how we do this thing together in Jesus' name. Amen. So y'all lend me your attention for a moment. Uh, the amens that you quieted down on, I want you to go back and get them. Amen. I don't want to sound like we're sleeping. Here. Now, now, Sister Riggins, y'all, she was in there preaching. She was supposed to be teaching Sunday school. I heard somebody, ha, man. Oh, man. She, she was getting things warmed up in there. <laughs> amen. But I, I thank God, amen, for her spirit and drive today. Amen. That's what it ought to be about. We're just getting ourselves ready for the main course. Amen. amen. So God bless you. We're going to. Uh, take time uh, this afternoon and look at Romans 8 and verse 16. Romans 8 and verse 16. When you do find it, rest on your feet for just a moment. Amen. I thank God that uh, we're able to uh, stand during the duration of praise and worship. And remember when we come in, I mean, we should do that. Be excited for those that can't stand. I know those that can't stand. I know those still, the ones that you can't do it. Amen. I understand. Trust me. But for those of us that can, we need to do that when we come to worship the Lord. But there's going to come a time when you won't be able to make. We hope not. Amen. You be walking at other people, walking around, and you mad at them because they still walk. You be using yours. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let me get into the word. I heard you. I heard you. I, I heard you in the spirit. I know you didn't say it out loud. You said, All right, preacher. Now come on. <laughs> Let's look into the word. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk this morning briefly from the subject, the God Squad. All right. Bless us, Bishop. The God Squad. Any of you remember, um, like me, I love gangster movies. I love those movies, Elder of the. 20s and 30s of the old gangsters mm -hmm. with the, they dressed well oh, yeah. in those days. Yes, they did. The hats <laughs> that they wore, they was always dressed. Yes. Amen. But there were certain gangster movies back in the day. We call them games now. Mm -hmm. All right. You do know that games oftentimes um, recruit membership. Um, by way of the individual that doesn't have or there's something missing mm -hmm. in his or her life. All right. mm -hmm. It could be a father that's absent. Amen. Uh, it could be a mother that's absent. Mm -hmm. She could be working three jobs and so she's just not home mm -hmm. in, in, in many cases. But Young men and young women find uh, refuge in gang affiliation. Mm -hmm. It's somewhat 
of a family nucleus. And so it's, it's, it's their family. And so there's a common thread. There's an understanding that um, these are the rules that go along with being part of this family. Those movies back in the day, I, I, I love mob movies. Yes. Some of you, one of my one of my favorite is Goodfellas. That's right. Everybody yes. remember Goodfellas yes. with uh, Robert uh, De, Niro De Niro and Ray Liotta mm -hmm. and more in, in those movies. But then I'm sure everybody's favorite is The Godfather. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. right. One, two, and three. Right. The Godfather and then there's one I've seen, uh, looked at not too long ago, called The Irishman. All right. That's a good one, and we all know about the American gangster, yeah. Yeah. Denzel Washington. Yeah. Mm. Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Mm. And there was that Cuba Gooding yeah. Jr., mm -hmm. Ice Cube. Y'all remember <laughs> that, don't you? Yeah. Uh, and Hoodlum. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Lawrence Fishburne. All of these have a common thread. Mm -hmm. uh, it is this family unit, yes. uh, this nucleus of like-minded people mm -hmm. uh, that may call themselves a gang or a mob, the Italian mob, right. the Russian mob. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Yes. The gangsters, they, they uh, put and carry out hits oh, yeah. mm -hmm. on people's lives. Oh, yeah. All right. uh, and in some games, we know you have to be jumped in. Right. But whatever the case may be, in order for you to be a part of this game, you must live by the rules that have been set in place. Yeah. Every mob has a mob leader. Yes. Every gang has a gang leader. Yeah. The gang leader is the one that directs those who are affiliated with the gang in what criminal activities to partake of. Mm -hmm. What you do is you carry those out. They say, to put a hit out on someone, you do that. That's right. uh, if, if, if it's to uh, launder money, you do that. These are just some of the activities that go on in mock life right. or, or gangster life. Yeah. You are therefore validated by how well you carry out the orders mm -hmm. of the leader of the day. Right. You are uh, uh, associated by, um, used to be, you would wear certain colors. If you're in the Crips, you right. wear blue. Right. If you're in the Bloods, you wear red. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, they used to have uh, their own patches yes. on their jackets. Right. Uh, they said, hey, we are the warlords. Mm -hmm. They wore it proudly, and and, and so um, uh, by their um, lifestyle, by their commitment mm -hmm. uh, to the gang or the mob, they are identified All right. very easily. They are. That's true. The scripture says in Romans chapter eight and verse number. 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. Let me, let me say this, because uh, there are many who claim to be children uh, of God that are not. Amen. They're not in the game. Uh, they're not in 
uh, the family at all. all right. they, they claim to be by way of their verbiage. Right. You, you, you do know um, uh, to claim that you are a part of the game and not a part of the game uh, can get you killed. You can't go around hollering that you're a part of certain games. And, uh, you, you know, because each game has uh, enemies. Yes. And, and so you have to be careful uh, what you claim. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful what it is and who you claim to be a part of. Yeah. There must be evidence uh, that you are a part of that game. Somebody holler evidence. evidence. It must be proven. Yes. You must be validated that you are a part of any association. Yes, and so there are those elders that claim to be. Mm -hmm. Listen, they, uh, uh, Sister Bozeman, they, they, they claim that they are a part of the family of God, but uh, that what they say is not validated at all. Uh, the scripture says this for those that claim in 2 uh, Timothy 2 in 19, in the middle part, it says, The Lord knoweth those that are his. Uh -oh. Y'all with me, right? Look at somebody and say, You might be claiming it. Come on, but tell them the Lord knows the truth. Yeah, but but in 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 the New Living Translation, it is, it says that the Lord knoweth those who are really His. Y'all <laughs> help me. I, I love that because everybody that's talking about heaven, let me go old school on you, uh, ain't going. It, it, it's set out one hundred. They ain't going to heaven. They talk about it. Amen. But but they don't know how to be about this whole thing. Amen. Uh, called being a believer in God. Yes. And so listen, there is really no proof. Yes. There's no validation of the claim that they are a part of the family of God or a part of the God squad. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so uh, there must be uh, a credible witness. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, baby. <laughs> a, a credible witness uh, to what you have uttered out of your mouth. Yes. Someone should be able to validate who you say you are. Yes. Uh, God, we, we have to understand this, this today uh, because of our old life. But back up to Romans 8. And, and verse number one. Romans 8 and verse number one to me, it kind of puts it in perspective. It says this, there is therefore now yeah. no condemnation uh -huh. to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, yes. but according to the spirit. Let's look at this. There, there, is, there is therefore now. Somebody holler now. Which, 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 which kind of uh, uh, helped me to understand uh, that my now that I'm in, uh, I haven't always been right. in my now. Right. That there is something that is called a past. Yeah. Uh, there's something that is called a present. And there's something that is called future. Yeah. Past happens to be yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and the present happens to be my now, at this present time. Uh, but then there is the future. The future helps me to know that eyes have not seen, nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for me. But, but right now, let me tell you, and before I got to my now, uh, I, I was a different person. That there was something I, I, I carried a different spirit. Uh, I lived a different life. Uh, I walked in a different path. Can I get a witness in here? 
uh, Ephesians 2 and 2 said, in, in which you once walked according to the course uh, of this world, uh, the prince and the power uh, of, of the air, the spirit who works in the sons and daughters of disobedience. Among whom also we are once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling, amen, uh, uh, the feeling of our flesh, amen, of, of, of the flesh in mind, uh, and were by nature the children of wrath, just as others. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I like that last part just as others because it allows me to know, amen, that I'm not the only saint in here today, amen, that has a sinner's past. All right, all right. Can I talk to you in here? Yeah. You look good today. You dress good. You dress good. You have your Sunday go to meet and close on the day. Amen. You smell good with your perfume on. Amen. But the way that you are now doesn't mean that you have always been like that all of your life. My grandfather would tell you, please don't think, amen, that people view you as being one that was born with a halo over your head and rings on your back. That's not you at all. Amen. But every believer that believes now, amen, has a sinner's past. And if you say you don't, scripture says otherwise. Yes. That there was a time that we walked according to our flesh. Yes. Amen. The flesh of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath. Yes. But look up somebody and tell them, if you don't mind, tell them that's my past. That's my past. Let, let, let's not Let's not get into the specifics of things. Let's not amen, get, get, get into uh, uh, what it is uh, that you've really done uh, and how low down uh, that you used to be. Amen. Let's, let's not go there and, 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 and talk about that. But, but what we can't talk about is what Philippians 3, 13 and 14 said. It says, brother, now do not count myself to have apprehended, yes. but this one thing I do. Yes. Oh, he said, now forgetting those things which are behind, yes. I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Yes. Uh, listen here, listen, listen, uh, because he's talking from the place of his present circumstance. Uh, God, his present circumstance, uh, being in God now, helps him to look to the future. Uh, in God, look at what it says. He says, he said, I, I'm, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. The thing that I used to do, I don't do no more. The places that I used to go, I don't go any longer. Those, those drinks that I used to drink and those smokes that I used to smoke and all of that I don't do anymore. It's all behind me now. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, let me tell you again. Come on, say, neighbor. It's behind me now. And do me a favor, stop bringing up the stuff that I used to do. Yeah, I ain't trying to get a shovel and dig up your past. Stop talking about the things that I used to be in and the person who I was. That's in my past, but as for my present, amen, I'm a new person. Yeah, in my present, amen, amen, I'm a new, I'm a new woman of God. And so I'm reaching for different things now. I have a different desire than what I had in times past. I have different goals because I know that in the future that there is a prize. Ah, for those of us, amen, that are the cause of God. Uh, there, there, there's a prize for my faithfulness. There's a prize, amen, for my uh, being faithful, being faithful unto God. Be, be thou faithful uh, unto death. I love that scripture because please don't get it twisted and think that it said be thou faithful unto 
until death because I found out first lady we have a whole lot of until saints but we need more unto saints uh, some of you are faithful until someone rubs you the wrong way now you're faithful until and someone gets on your last nerve you're faithful until the pastor says something you don't like and you don't agree with he get on my nerves and we're faithful until the God is not calling for you to be faithful until God is calling you to be faithful unto yes somebody have a thank you Jesus come on say it again say thank you Jesus God wants us to be faithful unto death. Yeah. Scripture says that there is therefore now no condemnation. Ah, oh, there, 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 there is therefore, somebody holler now. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation. There, there, there is no punishment. There, there is uh, no uh, intended punishment, amen, that, that I uh, am, am to faith, uh, that, that condemnation, it means that there is no legal bias, uh, 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 basis, amen, to sentence you uh, and me to eternal hell. Now hear this, because something had to happen in order for that to change. Something had to happen uh, in order for you to uh, have gone, amen, or rather come into your presence. Something had to have happened in your life now that intertwines you uh, and makes you a part of the God squad. Yeah. Yeah. The family. Right. Yeah. So somebody, I'm in, I'm in the family. Why are you in the family? Let me tell you why I'm in the family. Uh, they made me an offer that I couldn't um, repeat. Y'all y'all get me? I see y'all movie busted here. Yeah, that 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 that's what happened. That's what happened. That there, 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 there was there, there was an offer uh, that was made. The rest, if you go back to the beginning of the text, it says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. Amen. But after the spirit. And I so know this that the flesh is equivalent to death. However, the spirit is equivalent to life. Can I say it again? Everything that's connected to the flesh is going to die. That's what you have to know, that your time down here is limited. There is an expiration date, amen, for all of us. You do know every time you go to the cemetery to look at, amen, and to go to the grave site of your loved one, it has their birth and it has their uh, day, day of death, but in the middle they talk about the dash. Amen. The dash is a dash for a reason. The Bible tells us that life is like a vapor. Amen. Of smoke. We have to understand we start off full and full of vigor. But don't you know it soon fades away. Amen. Life is really too short. Y'all hear me? Amen. To be playing around, to be in between, unsure of whether or not if I'm going to stay with this thing, amen, uh, I'm going to do it until, amen, I want to do something else. Or until, amen, uh, you know, I want to uh, leave this church and go to another church. And, and I, no, 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 no. God is now looking for seasoned saints. Yeah. I'm going to have a seasoned saint. Uh, season, season, saint are the one that will know how to put liars in their place whenever they try, amen, to stir up trouble and mischief within, within the body of Christ. Those old soldiers would put you in your place and set you down and tell you you need to go back to the altar. And repent of your sins and get right with God. Now, let me ask the question, whatever happened to the spirit of the old saint that knew how to keep things in order, that knew how to keep, amen, those who tend to get out of line, get them in line. Now, what happened to the spirit field, baptized, saved, sanctified, holy Ghost field, and fire baptized believers of God, amen, that's 
thing that stood up against the pastor, the man, or the woman of God. Remember those old saints, amen, that would protect their leaders. Remember the old saints, amen, never seated closer to the pulpit than anybody else. Amen, to make sure that they pray and praise enough that there will be no hindering spirits. Amen, that will come from the pulpit. It wouldn't get past them because they were pleading the blood. Amen, they were speaking, amen, in the Holy Spirit. And they would confront the enemy, amen, nose to nose and cheek to cheek and eyeball to eyeball. And so listen, because the mob and the gates, the ways that you used to have when you were in the world, some of you still got it. Right. You got it. Right. It's like what they say. You know, I used to dance. Not me. When I was in the world, amen, I haven't stopped dancing. I just switched parts. Yeah. Let, let me say it because Paul was the same way. Paul, amen, he was just one that was, he hated the church and he had such a tenacity against anybody who said that they were Christian or believed God, he was going to hunt you down. He had this tenacity about himself. I would look at Paul as being a gang leader. I would look at Paul as being, as being a gangster, but his name went from Saul to Paul. He said, don't get it fooled now. Listen, I still got some gangster in me. It's just a different kind. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, please don't get it twisted. I know, I know I'm saved and I love God. Amen. But I still got some gangster in me. I still got some hood in me. But it's the right kind of gangster. It's the right kind of hood mentality. That was Paul. Paul was like that because he said, listen, I was one that once persecuted the church of the living God before I knew better. But now since I'm one of his, my main job is to present the gospel to the Gentiles. I'm only here. I'm recruiting. I'm recruiting. There's going to be fruit from this life. There's going to be fruit from, hallelujah. There's going to be fruit from this life. Somebody have a thank you, Lord. Say it again, say thank you, Lord. This is what the scripture says in John 15, and, and, and we'll kind of move through it, but it says this at uh, around 4 through 11. Read the rest when you have time. Uh, it, it says this. Now, remember the last thing I said to you, amen, that, 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 that the flesh is equivalent to death. However, the spirit is equivalent to what? Life. To life, say it again to life. life. Say it again to life. life. Now, how do you maintain and hold on to this new life that you now have? Yeah. Now, remember, there's a past, but now you're in your present. Yeah. How did you get to your now? Amen. There is therefore somebody holler now. now. Every time you think about it, think about your past. Yes. You ought to give God praise for your name. Oh, yeah. Anybody running for Jesus? Yeah. Running for Jesus. Uh, and I'm not tired yet. Uh, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell them, Sister Riggins, I'm saved. Thanks, Sister Lauderdale, I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost feel. Tired by time. I'm running, running for my life. So now, ah, oh God, sister Annette, I'm on the right team. I'm in the right game. Uh, God is calling the shots. Jesus uh, is our elder brother. Uh, and we carry out the plans of the Holy Spirit. So Muhammad, thank you, Lord. John 15, 4 through 11, it says, Abide in me, and I will I will abide uh, in you just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides where? In the vine, neither can you unless you abide where? Unless you abide in him. Understand this, that being a part of the family of God, that, that we are this pot tied beating. More ambition. We are body, yeah. soul, and spirit. Yeah. Understand that? Yes. The body is what houses the soul uh -huh. and the spirit. Yeah. It gives evidence to the left of claim yeah. that your eating is alive. Uh -huh. Like putting your foot in the sock. Putting your hand.
spirit represents life. And once the spirit is gone, amen, the lump of flesh goes back to the dirt from which it came. Yeah, yeah. Scripture says the dust of the ground. Yeah. How we were created and how dare you think that you are better than the next. Right. When we all come from the dust yeah. of the earth. Yeah. Dust happens to be the residue after the dirt. Right. Yeah. Stop thinking you are that Amen. Because you still ain't out there. Right. Amen. In the world. And yes. You can't believe. I can't believe. Ain't no way in the world. You used to do some of the same thing the scripture says. Yes. We just ain't privy to know all of your business. Yes. Amen. But understand if it's not for the spirit of God, there would be no light in you at all. And so there are those that will argue and say, I'm a part of the family of God. But yes, we are a part of God because of creation. Yes. Secondly, because of redemption. But then finally, the one that I love because of redemption. Oh, uh, now redemption, let me say this, regeneration. You have creation, you have redemption, and then you have regeneration. Uh, just like God told, uh, Jesus told, Nicodemus, man, you must be. You must be born again. Being born again, what it does is, it's a spiritual union uh, between your spirit and the spirit of God. There is a marriage that takes place. Uh, but those that tell the Lord yes, it is the intertwining of your spirit and the Holy Spirit. Now your spirit in turn is subject to the Holy Spirit. That's why the scripture says that we should walk in the spirit. So we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We don't follow after the flesh. Amen. But we are led of the spirit. And since our lives have been intertwined with the Holy Spirit. Somehow I thank you Lord. Yeah. There is an expectancy. Amen. That comes from the spiritual union. There's something that is expected out of your life. Ah, because you say it, and you say that you, amen, are in the family. Yeah. I'm in the family of God. I'm a part of the God squad. Then if you are a part of the God squad, and in this spiritual union, understand there must be, amen, a level of fruitfulness yeah. that comes from your life. Hallelujah. It's the Mahama Thank you, Lord. There must be your life uh, must be a fruitful life. Somehow a fruitful life. In other words, you must bear the fruit of having been connected to Jesus himself. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me put it to you like this. What life does, life produces life. I'll talk to you. That's what life does. Even, even in even in the natural, what life does, life produces life. Genesis 1, 27, 28, it says, And God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created him male and female, created them. 28 said, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Amen. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, of the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Uh, Somehow, thank you, Lord. Now, I got something from that elder when I read it. Because even though that's in the natural, but since we are joined to God uh, by way of His Spirit, we must do exactly what He tells them to do in the natural. Somebody asked me, what is it? And in this, we must do this one thing. We must be fruitful. We must multiply. And we must subdue the earth. God help me here. If you have what you say you have on the inside of you, you must bear the fruit. God, that, that you have the Holy Spirit on the inside. The way that it proves 
believer's life and to be fruitful and to multiply. Let me tell you this and to subdue the earth. This is what God gives unto earth to us. And we must understand this. Amen. Now the scripture says that the Spirit Himself, we did what He bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. What it means is there must be validation. Somebody say validation. That, 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 that means, amen, uh, there should be someone that's able to vouch God for your character. Uh, that, that, that there must be evidence that you have been with Jesus. Uh, somebody have a faith in all. Uh, that's what's missing in today's believers' lives. Uh, there's missing evidence uh, that you've been born again. Uh, somebody have a my God. Uh, you can sing, you can play, you can preach, but there's no evidence that you have ever run into Jesus uh, at all. Uh, look at your neighbor one time and, and say, maybe I'm looking for evidence. Looking, looking, for, looking for some validation. Looking for some validation. Now what the Holy Spirit does, the Holy Spirit's job is first, amen, is to bear witness that we are the children of God. Amen. It is to bear witness means to show that something exists or that something is. Something that gives evidence that you are a part of the God squad. Amen. It's not enough just to make a statement of saying that you are saved, but there must be evidence that speaks well of your life well, that you are saved, that you are sanctified, and you are Holy Ghost filled. Now, somehow I thank you, Lord. Now, you must understand, amen, that the Spirit bears witness of what the Holy Spirit does. He confirms what it is. Hallelujah. He does better than asking someone to vouch for your experience. Uh, because maybe you weren't there. Uh, maybe you weren't there when I was baptized. Uh, maybe you weren't there when I was Holy Ghost filled. Uh, maybe you weren't there when I went down in Jesus' name. Maybe you weren't there, amen, when I joined the church. And so the job of the Holy Spirit is to confirm what it is uh, that you say out of your mouth uh, that you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, that's the job, uh, amen, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he is to bear witness. He is to confirm uh, that what you say is true. Uh, somehow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's his job, his job, his job is to confirm. Uh, amen. What happens is the way that it is confirmed that you are a child of God uh, is how well you adhere to the word of God. Let me say it like this. How well you respond yes. to the word of God when it's preached. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's the first sign of good evidence. Because if you're being born again, Listen, listen, you respond to the word of God yeah. if you've been born again because that's the thing that connects you with God. Yeah. Remember, his word cannot be understood with your natural understanding, yeah. but his word is spirit and his word is life. Yeah. And so life, somehow have a born life. And so what happens is the Holy Spirit then confirms so the Holy Spirit, after he confirms that you are children of God, the Holy Spirit now forms Christ yes. in the life of every believer. How does he form Christ? Amen. By way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The way that the Holy Spirit confirms. Amen. Or get evidence. Amen. That we are children of God. Yes. It's by how well respond to the preached word of God. It's like going into the doctor's office 
had to step in between. Yes, step in between the bullet. He would do it just to save the life of those who he worked to protect. I love the movie. The favorite part of the movie that means the most to me. Denzel, Mr. Crazy. He was riding in the car. Before that, he talks to. He talks to the daily Mexican gang of drug cartel. Talks to them on the phone. The only way you can get the girl back is that you give me something. He says, wait a minute, you know what I can do? What I do is, I give you a life for a life. Yeah, I remember the movie. He says, hey, well, what I do is, you will be in exchange. I'll give my life uh, for her life. Ooh, can you hear? Can you hear Jesus? Yeah. He said the same thing. Yeah. God, God, God. We gotta go down and be the name back onto us. Let me tell you, I'm healed out just for me. 
he's gotten down on the inside. But I can say is greater. Repent of your sins. 